Is Bronny James low-key ruining the NBA? We got to answer this question. Yeah, because this is going viral, viral right now in the sports world. Some people are asking, is the James family the new Kardashians? Is sports just turning into the Hollywood entertainment industry? Is the sanctity of the sport gone? Is it unfair scrutiny or is he Anthony Bennett all over again. All right, so we're going to try to answer this question. We got a lot of major takeaways. We're big NBA fans. Let us know if you're keeping up with this. David, what is the current situation with Bronny James right now, and what have people been saying? Finals MVP Jalen Brown was courtside at Summer League, Celtics versus Lakers, and turned to his girlfriend and said, I don't think Bronny is a pro. He ain't got it. And Angel Reese said, he ain't. So basically, people are saying, is Bronny James the biggest Nepo baby in the history of the NBA so far. But a lot of people are arguing back and forth. Andrew, Stephen Hunter is going at LeBron saying, you know what? MJ and Kobe would never. Dwight Howard is inviting, you know what I mean? Well, there's a joke that Dwight Howard is inviting Bronny James to come play in Taiwan. Awful Coaching has a bunch of videos with 500,000 views breaking down his offensive and defensive lowlights. And I'm telling you, this is the general talk of every single sports show right now. Let's run the clip from Undisputed. He hasn't gotten there to give me just a little bit of a glimpse of what he could possibly be. Just hadn't given me anything. When I'm looking at air balls being shot, but then in the initial press conference, I got Rob Palinka selling me on something you about D D and th 3 and D, and I got J.J. Reddick telling me something, you know, and I'm like, okay, well, they're there. They see it up close in person. But then all I do is see what I saw <laughs> a while ago. It makes me, you know, it's just like, what else am I going to say? Andrew, should Bronny James quit and become a professional Call of Duty player? Because <laughs> oh, some people I, are saying, yo, man, he was part of FaZe Clan. Well, I'll tell you this, man. The internet is a savage place right now, and they are not going to be kind to LeBron. I'm a huge LeBron fan, but I will say this. If Bronny James does not ever turn out to be a productive NBA player, it's gonna show. Uh, it's gonna show up as a mark on LeBron's legacy for making this happen. Right, right, right. So we got to talk about some macro takeaways after we answer the question, Andrew. Is LeBron James or is Bronny James presence ruining the NBA? Right now, first of all, I want to talk about nepotism in the NBA, and we all know on the ownership and the business side, in business in general, all types of business, there's a ton of nepotism. If your dad is the CEO, if your dad owns a team, you're getting a job on the team. Right, now, even if you don't know about basketball, you're now, saying you get to be like the team VP or yeah. something like that. Now, only recently have we seen more extreme examples of nepotism like Giannis Antetokounmpo, who is the reigning MVP and reigning champ, or not reigning champ, but he was a champ, MVP on the Milwaukee Bucks. He got his brother Thanasis on the team, and a lot of people see Thanasis as a Nepo uh, guy. Nepo because, brother. Yeah, Nepo brother, but I will say this. Thanasis does have a highlight reel that actually looks good. He also has a low light reel that looks terrible, but uh, he is an example of nepotism because he may not be on the team if it wasn't for Giannis. Andrew, J.R. Smith one time signed a contract with the Knicks and forced his brother Chris Smith, who was struggling in the G League at the time, to be on the team for half the season. Right, so there is examples of nepotism in the NBA from players who kind of have a good uh, agent that can negotiate or teams that really want them. They're going to be like, hey, man, bring on, bring on my brother. And usually it's a brother. Yeah. They said that Leangelo Ball was uh, forced onto the Hornets G League team for two years due to LaMelo's presence. Yes, yes. So there is definitely nepotism, but I will say this. Bronny James, and I don't think, I don't think Bronny James is worse than Leangelo Ball, obviously, but I do think the amount of attention that Bronny James is getting is like, makes it seem like this is the worst example ever. So well, I'm going to go into talk about David. I want to answer the question using my analytical, you know, NBA fan mind about does Bronny James actually ruin the NBA right now? Because I think some people are wondering that question. All right, here's my takeaway. He's not ruining the NBA. <clears throat> He's ruining this summer's NBA coverage. Okay, all right, that's fair because I, we're, let's go through the reasons real quick on why I don't think... Bronny James has ruined the NBA yet, all right? Because, uh, one, he hasn't even played an NBA game, technically. This is just summer league. I think people need something to talk about. He is LeBron James's son. No, he was not even the best college player, nowhere near it. But 
he obviously has some tools and athleticism and the background to be an NBA player. Right, he got a 40 inch vertical. He can explode off the ground, even though does he know when to explode? Yeah, he does in the drills and the combine. He, he did perform pretty decently, shot well, but he has not found a rhythm and he has clearly not gotten over his nerves in the summer league game. So how he's much, playing bad. How much is it that the two top picks are from France and nobody knows who they are because they're from France? Yeah, and no, to be honest, he is... Uh, Bronny is taking away some coverage from other upcoming players in the league. But uh, so, and then, so I, I think that number two, I don't think he really destroys the NBA any worse than like these really terrible number one, number two top picks that were complete busts. You're talking like, about Anthony Bennett, Darko Milicic, Kwame Brown, Michael Alawakandi. Yeah. I mean, these guys kind of hurt the NBA because there are struggling franchises that need top talent. And then they rely on a guy like mm. Greg Oden and they never turn out. So think about it. So the Lakers, yeah, they spent their 55th pick. LeBron kind of pushed for Bronny James to get a four-year contract, which I will say was pushing it, Bron. But he's a 55th pick, and Lakers have the money. So it's not— But, he's, but, but do you think that all this scrutiny and everybody ripping him down now would be there if they had just signed him to a two-way contract or an Exhibit 10 Summer League contract? I, I do think there would be scrutiny on Bronny James regardless— regardless on where he went in the league. But yes, I definitely th think people are going extra savage on him. And no, Bronny's not playing well. And no, it's not looking good so far. Do you think Michael Jordan would have did it for his sons? if they? Because actually Michael Jordan had a son that was potentially in the same situation. He was like a mid-major star. Ah, shot his, his son was like a D1 player. But yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, no, I don't think Jordan would have. I don't think Jordan would have. I think LeBron... Loves his son like LeVar Ball loves his sons. Now, we got mad at LeVar Ball for talking up his sons, and two of them went on to have to be pretty good, and especially one of them, right? So, Melo Ball is still right, in the league. If Lonzo stayed healthy, he still would have been yeah, pretty good. Yeah, Lonzo would have been pretty good, yeah. So, I think that overall, I think that it is nepotism, but I don't think there's going to be another Bronny James. I think this is the last Bronny James type situation there will be. So, Bronny James is far from ruining the NBA, yet... He's only taken over summer league coverage. I agree. And he probably doesn't deserve all this coverage, but he's LeBron James. Somebody son. did call him the worst short player drafted in modern NBA history at 6'1". Because here's the thing. With Bronny James' skill set, Andrew, if, you're, if he was 7'1", or maybe even like 6'8", 6'9", it would be okay for him to be a 3 and D guy that's struggling from the corner. He'd basically be like Matisse Thibel. But at 6'1", you got to be Peyton Pritchard Fred Van Fleet to stick in the league. Yeah. No, it's true. I mean, uh, and Thanasis, for example, Thanasis Anadokounmpo, Giannis's brother, he's 6'7", very athletic and very strong. So he's still able to play defense whenever he's in, at least. That's an energy player. Yeah. Anyway, Andrew, here are my major takeaways. Pushing, number one, pushing or rushing a product that isn't market-ready or near its final refined polished state out to the showroom floor and you're rushing a product out to market, it can get pretty ugly. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. basically you're trying to rush something that maybe has some potential, but has not gone through any of the phases of refinement and you're putting it on the main stage. Yeah. I think Bronny's honestly, ideally would have stayed in college another two years, maybe transferred schools, gotten more playing time, developed. He, he, he looks about at least a year and a half, two years behind. Yeah. I mean, look at Andrew. Is he realistically, by the way, this guy's eighth Chinese, any better than last year's 55th pick, Isaiah Wong, who's about the same size? Yeah, probably not. He's yeah, probably yeah, not yeah. better. Uh, here's the thing, though. Maybe Bronny takes some ayahuasca or whatever, gives up video games, and just dedicates the next three years of his life to training everything related to basketball offense and defense IQ wise. He has the potential to stay in the league, but it, yeah, you got the six, far. seven wingspan. You got the 40 inch vertical. The jumper aesthetically looks good. Point number two, Andrew, it's hard to beat people in life that are way more hungry than you and care way more than you do. Mm -hmm. Cause some people were saying, Andrew, that Bronny seems to be more so doing it for his family and his dad's legacy rather than anything that has to do with his own desires. Right. So, so does it look like Bronny James himself wants to be in the league? Does he really have that passion for basketball? I think he does. I don't know if he has top tier passion though. Does it seem like he has more passion for Call of Duty though? Possibly, right? Um, 
you know, you see this with rich kids all the time in other industries, even within sports. Andrew Johnny Manziel stopped caring about his career once he got to the NFL. His family had oil money. Number three, Andrew, trade-offs. Everything is a series of trade-offs. To quote Tom and Soul, Andrew, Bronny brings a lot of increased market cap, SEO, and attention to the league. And some people are saying that he's just paying, uh, the league is paying his father back for generating billions for the entire economy of the league. Yeah, I mean, I think you can make an argument that LeBron, with all the greatness and the longevity that he's had in the league and how much attention he's brought in and how much money and how much he, the league has grown under LeBron James's multi, multiple 20 era, year career, right? It, uh, yeah, that he's kind of built up the leverage to do this, at least for a year or two. Like LeBron James has kind of won and deserve, like, deserves to let his son in the league for a couple years. Right. I guess, you know, right, like right, right. you could look at it that way. And the NBA is a business, and you're starting to see the business side where people are negotiating and trading things. It's not just who can play basketball. There are other players in the world who should be in the NBA already. We've known this for a long time, you know, skill-wise right. that are ready for the NBA, but for whatever reason, they're just not there. There's a lot of politics, just like Ky the reason why Kyrie and Jalen Brown himself are not on Team USA. Team USA is run by two things, Nike, the US government. Both of those guys have said things sort of that both those entities would not like, right? Point number four, Andrew, despite all this debate and uh, just arguing, Bronny should probably still be happy with himself in his own mind, right? Like, yeah. it's not like he, like, should, like, feel terrible every day, right? He's just trying to live his life with the cards he's been given. And uh, it's a crazy situation because some people are blaming Braun for using him to cement Braun's legacy and, like, rushing him when he might not even have wanted to go to the NBA this I, I, Listen, one thing I will not say is I don't think LeBron is betting on Bronny James to be an amazing basketball player for LeBron's legacy. LeBron literally wants to play with his son, do something that has never happened in the NBA. I think it's going to be cool. Right. If Ken Griffey Sr., Ken Griffey yeah, Jr. thing. If LeBron James throws an alley-oop to Bronny or Bronny throws an alley-oop to LeBron James, that's going to be really cool. And LeBron James is willing to take the hit to his image and have people criticize LeBron. He's ready for it. Right. LeBron knows what all this attention is about, okay? Trust me, LeBron has gotten attention since he was like 17 years old. He's been the center of the NBA, of the basketball world. So to me, he knows that he's getting criticized. Do you think that LeBron internally is frustrated at how apparently, at least outwardly, little Bronny seems to care? I don't know. I, th I think he kind of knows it was going to be a struggle. And I think the whole family was ready for some of this attention. I think here's this, Andrew, if Bronny, uh, if LeBron retires in four years and then Bronny's out of the NBA in four years, I don't think Bronny will have regret going to the NBA yeah. because at the end of the day, you got to be happy with yourself and the life we've lived. Point number five, Andrew, this is my final takeaway. We are all in a crazy way, Bronny James to somebody else. Mm -hmm. Like I'm saying that we've all been born in different situations because you can always find a lot of people who would do everything to be in your situation, but you're not necessarily maxing out the 10 out of 10 optimal potential or performance of your given cards. Oh yeah, Look, think about it. Like, you know, for some people, like, their whole dream, their life goal is to open up a small mom-and-pop restaurant. But let's say you're the child of parents who successfully own multiple restaurants. It's easier for you to open up your own restaurant or to take over your parents' restaurant. And a lot of people are going to look at you in that position and be like, oh, my gosh, you're so privileged. You come from a successful restaurant family. Right. Or your dad is a engineer and you happen to get good grades that makes sense like yeah of course like an engineer kid's gonna get good grades or your parents are hustlers they know how to they're good with money or they're accountants so they they're they know how to save money and you end up knowing how to save like like everybody a lot of people have some advantage over somebody else now Bronny james's advantage happens to be in the NBA, which it is a little bit more rare to see this advantage. Right, this then versus nepotism. your dad being an orthodontist and you become an orthodontist. Yeah, if your dad is in the medical field and you go into the medical field, big surprise, right? But good for you to keep trying and working hard. But you know what I mean? It just, so, you know, your dad is LeBron James. <laughs> it's just interesting. I guess I, we've never seen it 
in the game of basketball as much. Like we said, on the executive side, you see it all the time. Kids of owners take over the team. They don't necessarily know anything about how to run an organization or basketball, even though they've been around it. Yeah, listen, LeBron, Bronny cannot ruin the Lakers. He cannot ruin the NBA. The NBA would not allow that to happen. The Lakers won't allow that to happen if he actually ruins the league. He can't ruin it because he won't even get that much playing time. But, but, but here's the thing, Andrew. He could ruin people's image of the sanctity of the sport. Yeah, he's gonna. He is taking up a spot, and I think that's that's maybe. But people said the same thing about an old Vince Carter that was like, you know, at the last year of his career. Because everybody would cheer Vince for Vince Carter. Right? Oh, Vince Carter's taking up a spot because he's a 40. he's an all star. He's an icon. You know, he's taking up a spot on the roster spot. Listen, there's always somebody taking up a roster spot. I'm not saying it's okay, and I think Bronny needs to improve in the next year. I would like to see Bronny play this out for a year. But if he keeps sucking, then he got to go back to the G. Somebody said Mac McClung averaged 26 points per game and was the MVP of the G League, and he can't get in the NBA, and he won the dunk contest twice. What kind of white privilege exists there? <laughs> That's, I'm not going to lie. That meme kind of made me laugh. Ultimately, I mean, listen, guys. Nepotism, it exists in every sport. Like you said, like, and different people dominate different things. I think, you know, obviously, you know, white people do not dominate the NBA. But, like, I guess what I'm saying is, you know, it's a fascinating case study on human nature because we've never seen the greatest of all time do something, generally push their kid this high level into the pro version of it. This would be like Messi or this would be like Babe Ruth or like if Shohei Otani has a son that's not good enough to be in the MLB but like pushes his son into the major leagues. Yeah. So anyway, guys, let us know what you guys think in the comment section below. It's still possible Bronny could become a serviceable NBA player if he dedicates literally every ounce of effort he has to it. But Willie, let us know what you think in the comment section below. Until next time, we're the Hot Pop Boys. We out. Peace. Peace.